Hi everyone, we're talking about new research that has come out with regards to toxoplasmosis and some cognitive effects in adult patients who have been exposed to toxoplasmosis. So we're going to talk about what toxoplasmosis is in this lesson, and we're going to talk about some of those findings from some of that new research that has been recently published. So toxoplasmosis is a condition caused by an infection with the protozoa known as Toxoplasma gondii. And these protozoa are single-celled organisms and they are parasites. They are intracellular parasites, which means that they get inside a cell and reside there. So this is what can happen in human patients who have been exposed to these protozoa. Now, the epidemiology of the condition of toxoplasmosis shows that it occurs worldwide. It is a global phenomenon. And it is a very common condition, and it is estimated to affect approximately 30% of all humans. And this has been found by evidence of antibodies against this protozoa in roughly 30% of humans. And where these protozoa actually reside, the hosts of the protozoa are cats and livestock. Most often it's going to be cats, but it can be some livestock animals like cows. And then mice will act as an intermediate host. So how a person might actually get this condition or this infection with this protozoa oftentimes is by being exposed to cat feces. It can also be found in uncooked and undercooked meat. So if a person eats uncooked or undercooked meat, they can be exposed to this protozoa. And there can also be vertical transmission, which occurs when a pregnant woman gets this condition and passes it on to their offspring. This can cause a condition known as congenital toxoplasmosis. Now let's briefly talk about the signs and symptoms of toxoplasmosis. Now there is an acquired toxoplasmosis, which is something that is acquired during life in adults. So if a patient eats undercooked meat, for instance, this would be an acquired toxoplasmosis. Most often the patient is going to be asymptomatic, which means that they're not going to have any symptoms at all. If they do have symptoms, they can have what we would call cervical lymphadenopathy. So the lymph nodes in their neck will become swollen and tender. They can also have constitutional symptoms, which means that they have symptoms like fever and fatigue. And with regards to congenital toxoplasmosis, there can be cognitive impairment. And that's why it's important for pregnant patients to avoid risk factors for getting toxoplasmosis. So this is what is commonly taught, that there is cognitive impairment in congenital toxoplasmosis. And most often, acquired toxoplasmosis is an asymptomatic condition. However, this new research that we're going to talk about shows that even in patients with acquired toxoplasmosis, so adult patients who have been exposed later on in life, they too can have decreased cognitive functioning. So this is very, very important to recognize. And it comes from the article entitled An Association of Toxoplasma Gondii Seropositivity with Cognitive Function in Healthy People, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. So... This article looked at many different individual articles and collated the data into a meta-analysis and they present their findings in this article. Now, what is known to happen in toxoplasmosis is the following. These protozoa can get into the muscles of patients so they can reside in muscle cells. They can enter into the liver and reside in the liver as well, but they are also known to cross the blood-brain barrier and get into brain tissue. Now this is what's going to be very important in leading to issues with cognitive functioning. Now what has been noted in this meta-analysis is that patients with Toxoplasma gondii seropositivity, which means that they have antibodies against Toxoplasma gondii, which means that they've been exposed to this protozoa, at least at some point in their life, or they are currently infected with this protozoa, if they have been exposed, they are more likely to have decreased cognitive functioning. So this is an association, so we can't necessarily imply causation here, but it is an association nonetheless. Now the important findings noted in the systematic review and meta-analysis show that there is decreased processing speed. So if a patient has been exposed to Toxoplasma gondii, they have decreased processing speed, which means that if they try to do a cognitive task, they are slower than a patient who has no antibodies against Toxoplasma gondii. Now, what the authors also find is that the patients with antibodies against this protozoa also have decreased working memory compared to patients who don't have antibodies against this protozoa. So there is a significant decrease in working memory in patients who appear to have been exposed or infected with this protozoa. So working memory is the amount of content that you're able to keep in memory 
temporarily. So this is your working memory. If you need to remember a set of numbers, you oftentimes will repeat those set of numbers and you have a limited storage of working memory. But what has been found is that there's decreased working memory in patients who have been exposed to Toxoplasma gondii. There's also decreased short-term verbal memory as well in these patients. And then there's also decreased executive functioning. Executive functioning can be thought of as the ability to multitask and do more cognitively demanding tasks. So these decreases may be small in comparison to non-affected patients, but they are statistically significant. So this is important to recognize. And I want to mention this one last time. This is association data. So it doesn't necessarily mean that one is causing the other, but it does appear that if you do have antibodies against Toxoplasma gondii, you're more likely to have decreased cognitive functioning in these cognitive domains. So if you want to learn more about Toxoplasmosis in general, including how it's diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.